This vlog series is about the beautiful places, culture, history, and the food that I was able to experience recently throughout southern Spain and Portugal. I hope you'll follow along and enjoy learning a little about these incredible places. In June, I met up with seven friends at BNA in Nashville before boarding our plane to start our adventure. I explored Spain and Portugal back in the 90s on several occasions, so I was excited to see how things had changed over the years. We would eventually meet 12 others from various cities around the U.S. and three more Nashvillians, including my wonderful friend, Spaniard, and tour guide, Jose Aznar. Jose and I have been friends for more than 10 years, and he's extremely passionate about his country, especially his hometown of Alicante. He's a professor at Vanderbilt University and has offered educational adventures to students and teachers for years. He also puts together a few limited adventure tours, so when I saw the Southern Spain and Portugal trip, I had to go. In this Portu Spain adventure travel series, I will share my 12-day trip that took us from Madrid south and then west into Portugal and up the coast to Lisbon. I will share my experiences of exploring several small towns and large cities while offering insight to the art, people, culture, food, and historical highlights. Our first day included more than 15 hours in planes and airports, but nothing was delayed, so I was very happy. On our second day, we arrived at the Madrid International Airport around 7 a.m. in the morning, grabbed a cab, and headed into the heart of the city. We were exhausted, but needed to waste some time before we could get into our rooms. We met up with the rest of our crew at the Hotel Radisson Red, a four-star hotel in the city center of Madrid. After the long process of checking in and leaving our luggage with the front desk, we headed out to find some coffee and something to eat. There were several local cafes right up the street, so we grabbed some tasty pastries and warm beverages while agreeing on a game plan. Madrid was founded in the 9th century by the Moors, who ruled the Iberian Peninsula for centuries. The city was originally called Marit, which means place of many streams in Arabic. It wasn't until the 16th century that Madrid became the capital of Spain under the rule of King Philip II. The average pay in Madrid is generally higher than other parts of Spain, around 2,077 euros per month, which has led to a thriving middle class and a high standard of living. It is, however, considered quite low for Europe. The climate is generally dry and sunny with hot summers and cool winters. Its Mediterranean climate is ideal for outdoor activities like strolling through the city's many parks and gardens. One of the most significant events in Madrid's history took place in 1808 during the Peninsula War. The French army led by Napoleon Bonaparte invaded Spain and captured Madrid. On May 2nd, hundreds of Spanish people rebelled and were then massacred by the French. Named Dos de Mayo Uprising, this began the Peninsula War and is now a celebrated holiday every year in the city. Another important historical point was the Spanish Civil War, which lasted from 1936 to 1939. Madrid was one of the main battlegrounds, and the city suffered greatly. The most famous symbol of the war in Madrid is the Cartel de la Montana, former military barracks that were used as a prison during the war. Madrid is a city with a rich history, vibrant culture, and delicious cuisine, and is home to some of the world's most renowned art establishments. After eating, we decided to head towards the nearby Prado Art Museum. We walked through the Madrid Botanical Gardens and by the statue of Bartholomew Esteban Murillo, a Spanish Baroque artist from Seville and admired artist of the 18th and early 19th century. 
The line at 10 a.m. to get into the Prado Museum was massive, but we knew it was the best way to keep us busy while waiting to get into our rooms, despite being really tired and grumpy. The general admission cost to get in was only 15 euros, but unfortunately I had to leave my backpack of camera gear in a rented locker at the entranceway. The Prado Museum was built in 1785 by the order of King Charles III, but didn't open to the public until 1819. Today it houses a vast collection of European art from the 12th to the 19th centuries, including some of the greatest art masterpieces by Goya, Rubens, El Greco, Bosch, and many, many more. Its extensive unmatched collection of Spanish paintings is better than any other museum in the world. Having studied art in college, I was excited to see so many beautiful paintings in person with collections that span centuries showcasing some of the most important works in Western art history. The people, the cherubs, the animals, the food, the landscapes. I studied the brush strokes and intricate detail of each painting, wondering how each had been created. So much of the art seemed to carry sadness, death, religious connotations of both good and evil, lack and indulgence. Some were sinful, like the triptych of The Garden of Earthy Delights by Bosch. Some gruesome, such as the Goya painting, Saturn devouring his son. I pondered the meaning of each piece as I tried to take in as much as I could. Unfortunately, we were limited in how much time we had to spend there. It would have taken days to see everything in this massive and very busy museum. I could have looked through each room, floor, and collection for hours on end, but we had the full day ahead, we were all tired, and after several hours had to get back to check into our rooms. I loved the beauty of old historical cities, the cobblestone streets, the ornate architecture of the old buildings, and the misunderstood chatter of the people whose language I can't understand. As a kid, my mom had several antique shops, so my love of old things runs deep. As a photographer, my passion is to try and capture the essence of how I feel in the moment as I frame whatever point of interest is within my viewfinder. At 7 p.m., we met in the lobby of the hotel, then went into the city's central iconic square, the Plaza Mayor. It is an enormous must-visit landmark in the heart of the city dating back to the 17th century. The square is surrounded by historical buildings, souvenir shops, and lively restaurants. Its stunning Baroque architecture and arcades provide shade from the hot Spanish sun during the daylight hours. It's easy to get lost in the beauty of the square, but what really sets it apart is the lively atmosphere. Street performers and musicians entertain visitors as they enjoy tapas at one of the many outdoor cafes lining the square. The aroma of delicious Spanish cuisine wafts through the air at every corner. In the center, there's an equestrian statue of King Philip III. This gathering place for locals and tourists alike has been the heart of the city since the 17th century, witnessing bullfights, public executions, and royal coronations over its history. At 8 p.m., we had reservations at the restaurant Botin. Historically known as the oldest restaurant in the world, the restaurant has been operating since 1725 and is famous for its roast suckling pig and lamb cooked in a wood fire oven. We were seated upstairs in a small dining area. The atmosphere was cozy, the traditional Spanish decor was charming, and the service was friendly. Jose had the entire dinner plan from starters to desserts, including wine and all was inclusive with our trip cost. We all seemed to have bottomless glasses of red and white wines that really livened up the group of tired travelers. For starters, we enjoyed baskets of fresh baked bread with plates of local Manchego cheese made from 100% cheap's milk. It was wonderful, like every other cheese plate I was able to have while I was in Spain. Then we were served croquettes, which are small breaded Spanish cured ham and bechamel sauce and fused fried fritters. The popular Spanish tapa with a velvety creamy flair was awesome, one of my favorites. Next we tried the black sausage, also called mordella, a type of blood sausage that was savory but I didn't care for the texture. Another tapa we tried called Halos Madrid style, which is a beef striped stomach lining, was chewy, fatty, and a little overwhelming for my taste. Next came the main course which included baked Cantabrian hake fish, 
roasted lamb, and suckling pig with roasted potatoes. I tried the lamb and pig, and both were incredible. The tender, flavorful lamb was a bit gamey for some at the table, but I loved it. The suckling pig was tender and moist with crisp roasted skin that cracks when you cut into it. The roasted potatoes were flavored wonderfully, seasoned with sea salt and pepper. By the time dessert was served, I wondered whether my love of sugar could bypass my full belly, but who could pass up the variety of mixed desserts that included chocolate cake, cheesecake, Spanish cream-filled pastries, and carrot cake. As we waddled back to the hotel, our full tummies and exhaustion grew with every step. Everyone quietly slipped off to their hotel rooms to end the very first, very long travel day. Although brief, I enjoyed our single day excursion exploring the streets, shops, art, and local cuisine of Madrid. It is a very large city offering a blend of rich history, vibrant culture, and delicious food. I was looking forward to the smaller towns ahead, but what an amazing beginning to our travel adventure. <laughs>